everybody, today it's Thursday the 25th of February and our learning objective today in SLAW is to identify how meaning is enhanced through choice of words and phrases. We're going to continue to focus on our poem called Ancient Egypt and as I read the poem I'd like you to think about what things in this poem have helped us to learn about this ancient civilization. And as I'm reading, I'd like you to write a list of the things you now know about ancient Egypt from this poem. Ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptians lived along the Nile, and when the waters flooded, it made them smile. The soil became fertile, and so the crops grew. A healthy crop was, oh, such a lovely view. And a society grew by the riverside, which has intrigued people far and wide. They believed in an afterlife and so when they died, the rich Egyptians were mummified. Organs removed were put in canopic jars, but the brain was thought useless and thrown afar. The body was cleaned, natron was applied to dry out the body once the person had died. The heart was wrapped and put back in the chest. The rest of the body with bandages was dressed. The body was next in a sarcophagus laid and a mask for the face next was made. The heart was then weighed by Anubis to decide if you live in the afterlife once you died. Possessions from this life, if this be your fate, would be needed in the afterlife from that date. Pyramids were built to hold your treasures. This must have been such an extravagant measure. The most famous to be found of these large tombs was that of the young pharaoh Tutankhamun. Inside was to be hold so many clues displayed like hieroglyphics and senate, a ball game they played. A lot about Egypt now is known, thanks of course, to the Rosetta Stone, which allowed archaeologists to read hieroglyphics, the Egyptian writing which we think is terrific, as now we can learn about this ancient civilization, which is such an interesting part of our education. What type of poem do you think this is? What does it include? Well done, you're right, it is a rhyming poem. Remember, not all poems rhyme, but this one does. What I'd like you to do now is to look through the poem and find examples of rhyming words that you can find. Now, these will be rhyming couplets, which means there are two words that rhyme together, and I'd like you to write these down. Can you think of any other words which could have been used in this poem? What else could rhyme with the words that you have found? That is your independent task today. First, you need to write down the rhyming couplets. Second, you need to think of any other words which you could have used in this poem. You might need a thesaurus for that. And third, what other rhyming words could you have used in a rhyming couplet instead? Now, here are the rhyming couplets that I've found and I've identified them by highlighting them different colours. I've also written them down on the right-hand side of your slide. Now, I've circled two rhyming couplets. Can you think why maybe I've circled these ones in particular? You're right. I've circled these ones because they don't quite rhyme. And I know we talked about jars and afar yesterday. But I thought I'd also highlight to you the rhyming couplet hieroglyphics and terrific. Because hieroglyphics is also plural, like jars, it almost rhymes with terrific, but not quite. If it had said hieroglyphic and terrific, then that would be an exact rhyming couplet. Well done if you identified that today. Thank you for joining me guys today in Slaw, and I will see you again next Tuesday to work a little bit more on this poem.